Hello there everyone and welcome to another bit of fun with chemistry. Uh, what we're talking about today is the gas volume concentrations, the simplified versions. Um, we went through these in a webinar quite quickly but lots of people are struggling so let's have a look through them now, a bit slower and in a bit more detail. Okay, so first off, let's just focus on the few things that we talked about last lesson. So the content from last lesson relies on a few different things. First off, that you can balance a chemical equation and can you work out ratios? Now, ratios are taught properly in maths, or at least they should have been. <laughs> um, so two different ways to solve this idea of a gas having a certain volume. So if in a question you are only given information about volumes, for example, in a question like this, if you're given, let's say, the volume of uh, methane, which is the one on the right hand side there, uh, a volume of 100, it might be centimetre cubed, it might be decimetre cubed, whatever, and they're asking you to get the volume of the carbon dioxide, well, in this case, we haven't been given any information about the number of moles. Therefore, we have to get this one in a ratio with this one. Now, in the questions that we had in lesson, they were all already balanced. So what I'm going to do is very quickly balance this. You don't worry about that right now. If you need some extra support on balancing, there are some other videos on my channel about how to balance. Okay, so that is that equation balanced very quickly. So when this equation was balanced, I didn't put a number in front of the CH4, therefore you can treat that as one. I didn't put a number in front of the CO2, so you can also treat that as one. If in a question asked for, just like we said before, 100 centimeter cubed of methane and how much of the carbon dioxide we're going to have, well, let's compare the ratios. So the number in front of the methane is just one. The number in front of the CO2 is also one. So between the methane and the carbon dioxide, there is a one to one relationship. So that means if there's one block of methane, there's only one block of carbon dioxide. Okay, so if I had five blocks of methane, how many blocks of carbon dioxide would there be? Five. However, in this question, it says that we've got a hundred uh, and they've gone for centimeter cubed of methane. Therefore, how much carbon dioxide must there be? A hundred. Okay, so that was quite a straightforward one, but let's change the chemicals around a bit. Let's see if we can make it a bit trickier. Okay, so in this case, let's keep it as we've got 100 centimetre cubed of methane, but then the question this time, let's say, is looking for how much water that would produce. So, same as we did last time, that there's a big one in front of the methane, therefore, we're going to put a little one there. To figure out how much water we're going to get, there's a big two in front of that one, so I'm going to put a big number two there. So this is in a one to two relationship. How do you get from one to two via multiplication? You times it by two. So just like we did with the last one, we had five on the left hand side, going to times it by 2 to 10, just as an example. If we had 7 on the left-hand side, we'd have 14 on the right-hand side, okay? So the question actually said 100 centimetre cubed, so if we've got 100 centimetre cubed over here, it's a 1 to 2 relationship to get from 1 to 2, you times by 2, so 200 centimetre cubed. OK, so that would be how you answer one of these questions if they have only given you a volume. Now, that is not necessarily the only way to do one of these. If they have given you a mole 
then we have to build in the mole calculation. Okay, so let's say in this case, they've said you have got 0 0.25 moles of methane. What volume of carbon dioxide would this give off? So just in a similar way to before, when we talked about the ratios, the number of moles are in a ratio as well in the exact same way. So there was no number in front of the CH4, so that means that there's a little one there, and there's no number in front of the CO2, so that means there should be a one there as well. So this is in a one to one relationship between the number of CH4s and the number of carbon dioxides. Before we said if it's one to one, there's one on the left hand side, there'd be one there for that. But the question actually states there's 0 0.25 mole there, so there's going to be 0 0.25 mole of the carbon dioxide. So we'll use ratios in that first part there. Now let's add the formula triangle to it. So that's our formula triangle. We're trying to work out the volume of CO2. Our moles of CO2, we've already worked out. So to get the volume, I need to do moles multiplied by 24 decimeter cubed. That is assuming that the question wanted it in decimeter cubed. Let's go for it for this one. So your number of moles was 0 0.25. Going to multiply that by 24. Uh, multiplying by 2.24 is the same as dividing by 4, isn't it? Factor of a quarter. Uh, so what would that be? 12, 6. six decimeter cubed. So that will be your answer. Okay, so that they give you just volumes, you have to just do the ratio bit. If they've given you moles or M-O-L written anywhere, you have to use the formula triangle. So over at Modo for my students, I set a few questions for them to do. And there they are. Um, my students, you've already been sent a copy of this via Edmodo and school email address. For anyone else who wants a copy of this, this is freely available on my TES shop. If you look at the video description, you'll be able to see a link there for this. So if you've not already done these questions, go do them now. You're back quickly. Have you done all those questions? Really? Okay, then let's have a look through the answers. Okay, if you saw the webinar earlier, um, you probably can skip question one. I'll put some timings in the YouTube post so you can skip ahead to the question that you need the answer to. So question 1A, let's do this. What would be the volume of NH4Cl? NH4 is called ammonium. Cl is chlorine. That's an ionic compound, so we'd call that ammonium chloride. We don't necessarily need to know that, but it's good to. Uh, so what would be the volume of that when 25 centimetre cubed of NH3, which is called ammonia, so NH3 is ammonia, NH4 is ammonium, slightly different endings there, uh, when well, we've got 25 centimetre cubed of that. Okay, has it given us any moles? Therefore, we do not need the formula triangle. We've just got volumes, so we're just going to do this via a ratio. So let's check out the numbers in front of the equation. Have we got any balancing issues there? Um, that is all balanced already, so there's going to be little ones 
in front of each of these. So that means that the ammonia and the ammonium chloride are in a one to one relationship. So if I've got 25 and the units were centimetre cubed of ammonia, I'm going to also get 25 centimetre cubed of the ammonium chloride. OK, it's a one to one relationship. I got that from the fact it was a balanced equation and the numbers in front of those sections were both one, one to one. So it's 25 to 25. So that is going to be the volume of ammonium chloride that is produced. OK, one B. We've got the same chemical equation here, so we've still got the one, one and one. This is saying what volume of this would be made when 47 centimetre cubed of that reacts. I'll just put that 47 there just to remind me, so I don't have to keep looking back at that. OK, so the hydrogen chloride, that's what this thing on the left hand side is. There is one, so there's the big one. I'm just going to shove it down there. On the right hand side, I've got just one of that. So I'm going to go one. So a one to one relationship. It's not mentioned the ammonia in this section. So I, I'm pretty much just going to ignore that for now. In fact, there we go. Scribble it out and ignore that. So it's a one to one relationship. So again, if I've got 47 centimeter cubed of that one, I'm also going to have 47 centimeter cubed of that one. So your answer is that. Pretty easy, pretty nice. Um, let's have a look at the next one. This one again was covered in the webinar, so if you're happy with this one, please do skip ahead. So we've got slightly more complicated balancing here, but only ever so slightly. So uh, there's one lot of N2, which is called nitrogen. That's its diatomic elemental form. So nitrogen always usually just comes like that. So nitrogen usually ends up just like that anyway. So one nitrogen with three lots of hydrogen make two lots of, can you remember what that thing's called again? Ammonia. Uh, so what's our volume there? So have they given us any moles? They've only given us volumes, so we're just going to do this by ratios, OK? So we're trying to work out how much ammonia that we've got produced when 600 decimeter cubed of that one. So those are the two it's mentioned in the question. So for now, I'm just going to ignore the hydrogen. The ratio, I've got big number of one there, so that one is one. I've got a big number of two there, so that one is two. So this is a one to two relationship, i.e. to go from here to here, I'm just going to times by two. Therefore, if I had two lots of nitrogen, double it, I would have four lots of the ammonia. If I had five lots of nitrogen, I'd have 10 lots of the ammonia. OK, now in the question, it says. We've got 600 decimeter cubed of nitrogen. OK, so we're going to go 600. Decimeter cubed and we're going to times it. By two to get what that one is, so times it that by two. 1,200 units decimeter cubed. So there's my answer. Give your part to answer A in centimeter cubed. Well, well, this is one of those ones that I always struggle to remember. And the way I remember it is through something called a titration. Now we'll talk about titrations another time, but in the titration, you very often use 25 centimeter cubed of uh, a specific chemical. But then when you do your calculations, you've always got to convert it to decimeter cubed. So in, when you're doing a titration calculation, you always get used to seeing 0 0.025. So to go from 25 to 0 0.025, you divide 
by a thousand. So to go from centimeters cubed to decimeter cubed, you would divide by a thousand. So therefore, to get from decimeter cubed to centimeter cubed, you would times by a thousand. Okay, so the previous question we had 1,200 decimeter cubed. We're going to times that by a thousand to get one, two, oh. So one million two hundred thousand centimeter cubed, centimeter cubed. Okay, so there is your answer. If you like, you can convert that to standard form. So one point two times ten to the one, two, three, four, five, six. That might be an easier way to represent it. Always in the question. Always in the question. Double check if it wants it in standard form, or if it or how many significant figures they want to go to, they usually give you some guidelines in an exam situation. And if they don't, go to three significant figures and either standard form, decimal form, whichever one you're happy with. Okay, part C, it's the same equation. Um, so let's just put the one in front of there again. Uh, what have we got here? We've got the volume of that thing. Okie dokie, uh, produce 150 decimeter cubed of that reacts. In this bit it's not mentioned the nitrogen so let's just get rid of the nitrogen there and so we've got what we've ooh, we've got a bit of a slightly different one here we've got a three to two relationship so how do you get from three to two? Easiest way um, is I like to get one side down to one so I'm going to get three divided by itself to make it equal one and then times it by two. OK, so to get from three to two. You divide by three and then times by two. So if I had nine, for example, divide that by three times it by two. If I divide that by three, I'd get three times it by two. I'd get six. OK, so divide by three times by two in this case. Uh, but it wasn't nine decimeter cubed that I had. In the question, it said 150 decimeter cubed. Divide that by three. It's going to be 50 times by two, 100. 100 decimeter cubed. Convert that to centimeter cubed. So 100 decimeter cubed. To get that to centimetre cubed, we just times by a thousand. To get a hundred thousand. Or, if you're feeling la -dee -da, one times ten to the one, two, three, four, five. There we go. There's an alternative in standard form. Okay. Okie dokie, next one. Uh, it's the same equation. So one, three and two as our little numbers there at the front. They're called coefficients. Um, mathematical term. If a number goes before something else, it's a coefficient. What would be the volume in decimeter cubed of ammonia? volume equals question mark decimeter cubed produced when 0 0.5 mole of nitrogen reacts okay in this one there's given us moles so we're going to do the ratio but then add the formula triangle on top of that so we're going to ignore the hydrogen because it's not mentioned the hydrogen and uh, we've got here a one to two relationship there's the one there's the two. If we had 0 0.5 mol, like it says in the question, to get from one to two, you times by two. So to get from here to here, we're just going to times by two again. 0 0.5 times by two uh, is one. Formula triangle. 
uh, what are the units we're in. We're in decimeter cubed, so it's going to be multiplied uh, by 24. The volume there at the top. So the ammonia moles equals 1. Therefore, your volume of ammonia is going to be the moles multiplied by 24. So that's 1 times 24. And in terms of mental maths, even I can do that in my head. 1 times 24 is 24. And the units would be decimeter cubed. OK, that was E. And here we go for F, exact same equation. We're just getting used to this one. Um, it's given us, it wants the volume of the ammonia again. Now, I don't necessarily always want the volume of whatever's on the right hand side. This question just happens to keep sticking to that one, okay? Don't worry too much about which specific thing it's gonna ask for. The routine that you do is just the same. So what would be the volume in decimeter cubed of the ammonia? Decimeter cubed, so we're gonna be uh, times in by 24 later. Uh, produced when 12.7 moles of hydrogen reacts, so we've got moles. So we're gonna use our ratio and then add in our formula triangle as well. Uh, let's rule out the few different things from the question. It's not mentioned nitrogen, so I'm gonna scribble that out because I don't need it. Uh, and I've got the three to two thing again, Ugh, awkward. Three to two. So to get from three to two, I'm gonna divide by three times by two. So I've got 12.7 mole or moles on the left hand side. Let's divide that by three and then times it by two. 12.7 divided by three is 4.233333333. Leave that number on your calculator times by two is 8.4666666666667 blah 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 blah. So I'm just going to call that 8.46 with the recurring just over the six. Now in an exam situation do not round midway through a question okay. If you have a weird number like this just leave it there. If you have a weird number like this just leave it on your calculator, okay? Don't get rid of it, because then when you get rounding errors and your answer ends up being out by a certain number of decimal places, uh, and sometimes they penalise. I say sometimes, a lot of the times, they do get quite harsh on that. So I'm leaving that number on my calculator to play with later. So I've got 8.46 moles of the ammonia, the NH3 thing. So let's add my formula triangle to that. It wants it in decimeter cubed, so I'm just going to times it by the 24. If it said centimeter cubed, um, I could just times it by the 24,000 instead. Saves myself converting it a little bit later. So to get my volume, I'm going to do the moles multiplied by 24. So 8.46 recurring, the number on the calculator, times by 24. So I'm just going to get my calculator again. And just put times 24. So that equals 203.2 and it's in decimeter cubed. Now when I'm finishing these questions all that I'm doing is sort of underlining my answer. On a real exam um, I wouldn't advise doing that. Put it on the little line that they give you. They'll, they'll be like a little line at the bottom. That's what I'm trying to replicate with that little underlining section there, okay? Don't just underline where your answer is. Like, you can underline it if you want, but then make sure it's on the bottom line too, okay? Right, question three then. Uh, nobody's been through question three. Nobody knows the answer to question three yet. This was not done in the webinar, so this will be very interesting to see how you've done here. So we've got a bit of a big equation here. Um, all this is is what we call a combustion reaction. So we've got a fuel called propane, which is carbons and hydrogens. We call them hydrocarbons, clues in the name. It's reacting with oxygen to give off carbon dioxide and water. That is what we call complete combustion. 
not that that particularly helps us with the calculation now it's just some nice bit of chemistry knowledge there complete combustion so what volume of oxygen i'm going to underline oxygen because that bit's important is required to burn 24 centimeter cubed of propane see in this example it's two things on the left hand side the approach we take is still exactly the same okay we do not need the other bits so i'm just going to scribble them out gives me less to look at And it says that we have 25 centimetre cubed of that, so I'm just going to put that there. OK, so what relationship have we got here? What ratio have we got here? Do I need to use my formula triangle? No, I don't. It's only giving me volumes. It's not giving me any moles. So I'm just going to use my ratio solution here. So I've got one lot of this C3H8, which is called propane, reacting with five lots of the oxygen so this is a one to five relationship Whew. so if i've got so to get from one to five you're just gonna yeah times by five okay so i have got so i have got 25 centimetre cubed there. I'm going to times that by five. To get 125 centimetre cubed. Has it asked for in centimetre cubed or does it want it a different way? Um, it's not specified. So I'm going to leave it there as 125 centimetre cubed. Sometimes they might have said, uh, what is the volume of oxygen in decimeter cubed? And if it did that, then what you'd have to do is divide that by a thousand to get that into decimeter cubed. They've not actually asked for that in this case. But I thought I'd just show you that just for why not? Okie dokie, let's have a look at 3b. Okay, same equation. So we've got the same relationships going on there between the different elements, same ratios going on. Have we got moles in there? No, we do not. We've only got one volume given to us so we're just going to do ratios again uh, so what volume of carbon dioxide that's the thing i'm trying to work out is formed if five decimeter cubed of that is burnt so i'm going to ignore everything else what relation what ratio have i got here i've got a one to three ratio so if I've got five decimeter cubed of the propane to get from one to three, you times by three. So I'm just going to times that one by three to get 15 decimeter cubed. That's quite easy. Okay, C, it's the last question. So it's probably going to be the trickiest. Let's see what we've got. If 0 0.02 moles, okay, moles, we're going to need our formula triangle. I'll just pop that up here. Um, now, it's asked for it in centimetre cubed and in decimeter cubed. Um, so it's you can either do times by the 24 or times by the 24,000. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you go for, as long as you do the conversions correctly at the very, very end. So actually for now, I'm going to kind of ignore this bit. Um, I'm just going to get it down to what I'm comfortable with. So there's quite a few different approaches with this. This is just my approach. OK, if you've done yours a different way, but still get the same answer on the bottom line, it is all good. OK, with maths, there's a million and one different ways to get to the same answer. Um, as long as you've shown you're working, I'm all good. So I'm going to go moles and 24 decimeter cubed is volume just because 
I'm lazy and that's easier to write. So uh, what so we've got 0 0.02 moles of that, 0 0.02 will burn. What volume of this was produced? Okie dokie, let's scribble out that one. Scribble out that one. It's not mentioned oxygen or water, so I'm just going to ignore them. We have got, let's do the ratios first, a 1 to 3 relationship. So we've got, to get from there to there, we are just going to times by three. So if we had 0 0.02 moles of that, we're going to times that up by three to get 0 0.06 moles of that. So there I've got my moles. So part I asked for it in centimetre cubed, part II asked for it in decimetre cubed. I'm going to do decimetre cubed first because I like decimeters because we use them all the time in chemistry. I'm just used to dealing with decimeters. Uh, so volume is going to equal the moles multiplied by 24 decimetre cubed. So that's 0 0.06 multiplied by 24 decimeter cubed, type that into the calculator, 0 0.06 multiplied by 24 equals 1.44 decimeter cubed. I did say in the webinar, and I will keep saying it again, if you get weird numbers in mole calculations and in volume calculations, good, that is fine. Um, sometimes in maths they will say to you, oh if you've got a weird number you've probably gone wrong. That's not the case in moles, okay? With moles, if you get a weird number, you're probably right, especially if it's really, really small or really, really big. So don't be too concerned if you do get strange numbers. Okay, so I've got my volume there in decimeter cubed, done. It also asks for it in centimeter cubed. So I could just put maybe in an I, I there to show that's my answer for I. And to get it to centimeter cubed, so decimeter cubed, centimeter cubed we just times by a thousand so 1.44 decimeter cubed times by a thousand is 1440 centimeter cubed so that would be the answer for i so i i's answer is there i is there just because that's how I fancied laying it out, okay? With a lot of these maths questions, there is no specific right or wrong way to lay out your calculations. If you get the right answer, you get the right answer. Okay, so that is gas calculations, how to calculate the volume of a gas from either another volume or from a number of moles. We had a very quick introduction into moles. We will cover moles in much more detail at a later point. For my students, if you like, I can set you more of these to practice on Edmodo. But quite frankly, um, I think you've earned a nice bit of rest there, ladies and gents, girls, boys and others. I hope you have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Please don't work too hard. Please take some time to relax. OK, stay safe, keep well and be garden minions of science. Be gone!